And when I found out that it was historic, you know, like I did my research, right? So everyone knows the stories of the great Lady Bruce and those were local PD incidents. And I called the great Jane Fonda and she said, you know, I had local PD given arresting me. I didn't have the feds and stuff. And I talked to a great first amendment attorney, Ted Boutros, and he said, I looked it up and it's never happened. And so I thought, well, that's the part of the story that needs to be told because it, like me or not, and be offended by the photo or not, I do want people to understand uh, the bounds of the first amendment and the difference between yelling fire in a theater because people get trampled and killed, which is in violation of the First Amendment. What I did, or if you guys were to do something similar, is absolutely not. So it was interesting to really learn that because it's my commodity and most anyone in the arts, it's their commodity, but also as we become more politically active, and I think a lot of people here probably showed up and maybe more politically uh, engaged than they used to be, when you go to marches, as you know, um, there were more people arrested at the inaugural protest than any other protest in history. So I, I've been meeting a lot of people. You know, I made this film, uh, I did the concert part October 29th, and now it's been two years, and I do, I keep meeting more people that are going through things, I mean, nothing is as shocking as, as the concentration camps, and that's what they are, they're concentration camps. So. One of the reasons I feel so strongly about this, and I, I, I rescind the apology, you know, it, literally except for a very few number of military families, um, is because I do think it's time we call things by what they really are. And it's, I'm glad, you know, Waffle started using the word lie, and I'm glad they write democracy dies in darkness. And uh, it's important that we tell ordinary folks the difference between Facebook and news and we hold Zuckerberg accountable and Dorsey accountable yeah. and know these people and know these parties and know their power. And, you know, I had to learn all that stuff along the journey. Are you bored? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to block no, the audience. No, it's just, it's Showtime. It's, 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 it's simply that you cover five questions in one, you know, paragraph. I said, 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 I She's like, should I ask her first? I go, tell you, you'll be one, you did. Exactly. So I was like, let's get the next four. Did you know that Trump um, thought the Rohingya was a place today? I shit you not. In a press conference, you know the Rohingya Muslims. And by the way, did you ever meet Aung San Suu Kyi? No, but I don't want to meet her now. Well, I mean, they should just take back her Nobel Prize. How could that happen? She was a her. hero of mine. And when she was no, under house arrest, it. I thought she was a hero. Um, and now she's like a no, genocidal maniac. So anyway, the Rohingya Muslims are people who have had to migrate. and. We all know that there's going to be a lot more migration because of many issues, political and climate change. Anyway, uh, fucking, I call him Rump. So today at Rump at a press conference, they asked him about, of all things, the Rohingya. Like, even the Pope wouldn't say it, remember? And he goes, where's the... Okay, fuck <laughs> him. You know what I mean? Like, just someone metaphorically chop his head off. Metaphorically! I'm verbally, verbally making a joke as covered under the umbrella of the First Amendment because I'm a professional comedian and I can do it. What do you say? I mean, we've got, really, we've got all of these Democratic candidates now all trying to, like... Obviously, win, and yes. one of them is going to be on the stage with Trump, yeah. and they're going to find themselves the absolute object of a massive slamming campaign. You will, it's nothing. What you went through will be nothing right. to what whoever the Democratic candidate mm. you know goes through. Do you have any advice about how to deal with Trump? Because you're looking at all these <laughs> candidates. Who's going to deal with him best? I mean, you understood how I, to punch back in the most yeah. amazing way, and it's taken you, God knows how much courage and and sort of ingenuity and resources right right to punch back yeah what do you who's the best to do that do you think on the, on this current lineup and well how should they go about it how do they how do they manage to to beat him it's really easy like i i've actually figured out after all this time and you know i've, I've known him for a long time off and on as you have and he is a typical bully in that when you step up to him he backs down like the bitch he is and the last time i saw him <laughs> first, <laughs> He, you know, it, like, I, this has happened to me a whole career, but last time I saw him in person, he actually hired me to roast him as part of an apprentice challenge. And um, as I was walking toward him, he was going, oh, oh, here she comes, I'm scared of her. Don't be too tough on the hair. And I'm like, your nest will be fine. And so you just have to step up to him. So I, I will say, as much as we love to obsess about the 2020 race, I'm really all about the down ballot. So I think that we have a great stable. We have an embarrassment of riches. Don't believe the right wing when they say we're a wreck because we have so many candidates. But also just know that in your daily life, you're probably 
uh, going to have uh, be affected more by the down ballot races. So believe it or not, it takes like a half hour on the Google machine. Pay attention to who's running for county supervisor. Remember Kim Davis, that bitch that wouldn't marry the two guys? That was an elected position. So take five minutes and look that stuff up and your Congress people and your state representatives and state houses. And if we could just flip the Senate, that would be everything. Right? So, so get to know this candidate. Kind of fun, but of the of the candidates, I will say I want to see a female president before I die. Okay, I don't care if I'm on life support with a tracheotomy and I'm in a diaper in your apartment, which must be fabulous. I. You, you have like a fabulous apartment. I bet you do, right? Like a pre-war, like one of those. Did you tell somebody? Did you tell somebody? It's like I heard this system. Anyway, um, but I, I'm going to be honest. I it makes me a little disheartened that Biden and Sanders are just automatically polling the highest, you know. And I feel that Kamala and Elizabeth are so accomplished, so formidable. They're rising. They are rising. They're rising. And I am actually hopeful. I am a, one of the few people. I don't think he's going to win. First of all, he can't win fair, for real. He can't win fair. So the more journos, and I know there are some real ones here tonight, the more journos that do the work that some of our electeds aren't doing, and it's really the Republican Party we need to blame, so please stop beating down on my Nancy and the Dems that are letting you down. She has a plan. You think that she's going to just let the squad say whatever the fuck they want? Trust me. They okay, so coordinate so that shit. So what are you thinking about this? I think... They got to add. I want more squad members. I love that. So like, they got to be like the Lobotics and the Taylor Swifties, and, you know, the Barbies. And so uh, I think the squad plays such an essential role because everything they say from AOC going to talk to young Latina girls and telling them, you're America, you're everything that's American. The more we hear that is, I think, in part to take some of the centrist Dems more to the left. Now, I, you know, I loved Bill Clinton as a president. I'm glad I wasn't married to him, but I'm just saying, he was, people forget, he was a centrist Dem. He wasn't a lefty. My boyfriend, Jimmy Carter, was more of a lefty. If, by the way, if I could fuck, like, one guy, <laughs> who's your fuck bucket list? Like, who <laughs> Turkey shooting the other day. I think right. that was just so fabulous. What about him putting um, the uh, solar panels on the, uh, yeah. the top and of the White House? Fucking Reagan took them down. Yeah. Let's not revise history either okay. about Reagan and or W or H.W. Okay. About. Yeah. So, so I, I think um, we have to remember that, that the squad is not as extreme as they like to say. And by the way, you've traveled the world. If you call them socialists, you've never traveled to a real socialist country. So they are not socialists. All right. They may be progressive and who doesn't want Medicare for all. Even the Trumpers want it, as long as you don't call it Obamacare. So I, I do have hope in the Green New Deal, and I think that the squad will grow, and I think a big part of their purpose is to take the more centrist Dems, like I now live in California, we flipped 11 seats. And I mean, some of them by the skin of our teeth, and so we have to understand that it's not, we don't want to lose those seats. So it, we also don't want to dogpile them for not being left enough. So I think there is a plan. And the other thing is Nancy cannot, she doesn't, you guys, you know what she knows how to do? Whip votes. Right. She doesn't have the votes even in our house. Right. She doesn't, she just doesn't, that's it's simple math. So don't get mad at her, she's got a plan. But what are you gonna do in a country that thinks Facebook is news? Mm -hmm. 